On this episode of The City Buzz, we took a little field trip to iHeartMedia to speak to the queen of Q102, Rach. Hi. Hi. Listen, I am so excited to finally meet you. I feel like I've known you my whole life, though. Well, I, it's the truth. <laughs> we we're, were just social media friends, and this is like our first meeting. Our but first meeting. We haven't shut up since you walked through the door. No, which was an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Um, but it's crazy. South Jersey. Yes. South Philly. Well, I'm, I feel like, okay, see, this is where I chameleon a little bit. Okay. Because, like, I I grew up, I born and raised Philadelphia, but raised in South Jersey. Gotcha. But my family is from South Philly. So, so this I was, is why we get along. That's what I'm saying. Like, your accent's bringing me home. home. Even though I, my home is South Jersey. I grew yeah. up in Cherry Hill. But, like, uh-huh. my dad owned a restaurant in South Philly. So I was there, like, every weekend, every week. Like, it just feels very, like, comforting to I hear your, your accent. Oh, great. <laughs> At least someone can understand I me. I do. I do. No, and I love it. I truly do. Well, I feel like, um, you know, we're, we have a lot in common. Yes. I wanted to bring you something. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, what is this? Wait, where was this hiding the whole time? Oh, wait, it was dead hiding over there behind my back. Wait, I thought that you noticed literally it. We've been talking for an hour. I did not know. Am I supposed to open this? Yeah, open it. Open okay, it. wait, I'm so excited. <laughs> not the receipt. Classy, I love that. Not the receipt. My heart. I love you. Did you see what I just did? Yeah. That wine? Yes. Look at you doing your research. Yes. It, enjoy Shout your out Josh. Yeah, enjoy your wine. Oh, you know I will. Um, if yes. I weren't at like my place of yes, work right now, we would and there have a glass. Everyone and their mother, I would yeah. just say, let's crack this let's, open. Yeah, it's okay. Do your thing here. Give me the trash. Thank you. Wait, that's yes, so fine. So Thank you so much. For you. Um, so I need to know yeah. how you got your start, how this all came about. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, Rewind to you calling me the queen of q and two. That, like, just shook me. <laughs> because I grew up listening to this radio station. Mm-hmm. Like, like like you said, born and raised, like, South Philly, South yeah. Jersey. Like, this was all I ever knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just remember waking up, like, getting ready for, like, high school and listening to Elvis Duran and being like, damn, like, they just have so much fun and it's only 6 a.m. Like, what are, like what does the rest of their day look like if they're this happy this early in the morning? And what are they drinking? Because right. I need that energy. Well, they were telling you, like, they were drinking margaritas with Uncle Johnny on a Friday. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, I want to wake up and I want to drink wine with my bestie and chit-chat the morning away. Yeah. And then go on being productive throughout my day. So it was very inspirational to me to, you know, listen to Elvis Duran growing up, driving to school, whatever. And um, he's, he is... He's a legend. A legend. Well, and I met him like a few years ago. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like to me, when I met him, it was, it was when I got my job at Q No Two. Bigger than Beyonce. That, well, that's so. When you're calling me the Q No Two, I'm like, I'm not there yet because oh, you I are. see Elvis and yeah. I'm like, that's that's the king. So like, if I'm the queen, there how? I love this. That, you know what I mean? So the king I, and queen. I, I mean, please, Elvis would suggest <laughs> otherwise, obviously, because you know he, he swings different ways. But you know, he is just so inspirational to yeah. me and. I feel like in a weird way, and I don't even know if he fully knows this, but like I give so much credit to where I am today because of the inspiration he's given me. Mm-hmm. And then now it's so weird to call him like a colleague of mine. Wait, <laughs> that's so beautiful. Oh yeah, every like, jingle ball I like cry seeing him. He's like, Can you like let's not do that? Like we're like he's he doesn't view himself like here and me here. He's yeah. like, Rach, what's up, girl? You know what I mean? He's yeah. just he's the best. It's like so um like humbling. Oh, for sure. And it's also like it just makes you feel good, and it's so full circle, Very and much. it's beautiful. Like, Thank you're doing you. something that you love. Yeah. Um, you went to school for this? I did. I went to Syracuse University, um, which kind of, like, I never really knew much about. I didn't really do, like, my college research until, like, um, my grandmother one day also, like, raised all of She's off the boat from Italy, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you can relate. Yes. Um, and, like, she actually got in a car accident when I was younger and completely shattered her face, destroyed her vision, so she could only see out of her peripherals. And so growing up, like, I would always, like, the way I spoke to my grandmother was, like, if you're on this side of me, she would talk to me like this. Uh-huh. So she could she see. She would see. Okay. But, like, that was just, just that's all we ever knew how to communicate with my mom. And mm-hmm. she was, like, my ride or die, my person. I love it. And I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life other than, you know, let's maybe radio. And she's like, no, Raquel, you need to be on TV. And I'm like, why? And she's like, you're so beautiful. I'm like, well, how the hell do you know? Bet you're blind. <laughs> and she was like. Well, I can hear how beautiful you are. Wait, that's so nice. So oh after God. she passed away, I got it tattooed on my arm because it reminded me that beauty isn't always perceived to the eye. Okay. It's like an internal beauty, and it validated everything that I ever wanted to do, which was radio. Yeah. So I was like, you can be that companion for somebody through radio waves. You mm-hmm. can be that companion for somebody through TV. But for me, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be an Elvis Duran girly, and I'm going to wear my pajamas to work. I had mm-hmm. heatless 
curlers in here before you got here. So I'm like, I love this for me. Yeah. Um, but that's just kind of where the drive came from. I wanted to make her proud and like, you know, I wanted to be that companion for people who don't have one. This is amazing. Thank I, you. I love that you have that connection with your grandma because oh, yeah. my grandpa was my person. Yeah, yeah. And um, we, you know, he was very big with, you know, pushing me to do something I love. I mean, he was at college shows. He was 90. Like, come on. Oh, my whole heart. Uh, yeah. So it, um, that resonated with me sure. uh, because, you know, you're doing this in honor of her. Oh, yeah. And I'm doing my stuff in honor of him. And our grandparents, like, family means a lot to us. Oh, yeah. They're everything to my us. My mom was, like, matriarch. Mm-hmm. And everyone says that. Like, she's the matriarch. And it, oh, my God, I could, like, choke mm-hmm. thinking oh, about please, it. can we not cry? I know, I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> emotional. It's just an Italian thing. Yeah. Um, but, no, my, after she passed away, like, obviously years have gone by since then. But as of lately, within I'd say like the past year and a half or so, my cousins like keep kind of alluding to me being like the the next in line of oh this God. matriarchy. And you calling me like Queen of Q No yeah. Two. I'm like, am, first of all, one, am I getting old? Is that what you guys are all saying? <laughs> Two, I just I I see those people in those places forever. Like I yeah. truly will idolize my mom. I'll truly will always idolize Elvis Duran. And I'm yeah. like, am I really becoming that inspiration to other people? You a thousand percent. And are. I don't think I can process that just yet mm-hmm. because I still feel like my little my little girl self aspiring to do so much more mm-hmm. so i'm just trying to fill those shoes and you're doing a great job thank you you really are um you're living your dream you're living your dream for your mom mom it's Thanks. it's a really great thing and a beautiful thing today's her birthday actually Wait, are you kidding? No. Wait, are you kidding? Why? This is amazing. What's happening? It's just amazing. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, I know. So it just feels like I'm, I'm able to celebrate her. You're celebrating her I today. I am. Just talking about her makes me feel like she's like, we're celebrating. I love this. Thanks. My my grandpa's saying hi to her. Hey. Yeah, right. They're, they're just like, they're what arm in arm right now. They're like, yo, paisan, come yeah, on. Let's look this at our is girl. amazing <laughs> to it. me. Yeah, no, this oh, is great. Happy birthday to her. Thank you. I'll tell oh you said so. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> This is great. Thanks. Oh, my goodness. I love talking to Italian people. I, right? It just makes life so much easier. <laughs> it does. Uh, you're not going to answer or ask any of those questions on that list, Probably because we're going to go off on tangents. Wait, it's really bad. Like, I'm, like, looking, like, where am I at in this? Because you know what? Forget it. I uh, know. I need to talk about Jingle Bull. Please. Because um, Nugget, mm-hmm. he... Uh, you were I, on the show with him. I was on the show with yes. him, and uh, he's like, you know, come to Jingle Bull. So, you know, here we are. Oh, my God, are. shut up. You were there? Yeah. See, this is why I wish we knew each other sooner. Yeah, so I went to Jingle Bull, uh-huh. met my brother, Quiggs, and my husband. Uh, we went, Love and uh, I saw you in your red jumpsuit. Obsessed. Thank you. Me and you have very similar taste and style. Love it. Well, wait, you <laughs> literally wore almost the same exact outfit on the Thanksgiving Day parade. Same hair almost. Too. Literally, I, I love and it. I, I looked at you on the on my TV <laughs> and I was like, I don't know who this girl is, but she is me. I love her. Wait, and then this is literally, nuts. literally like a couple of weeks later is when we reached out to each other mm-hmm. in DMs. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, wait till she sees me at Jingle because I literally like stole her this, fit. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I love it. I'm like, this is amazing. It's so you funny. looked great. You Thank sound you. like you were owning the stage. I love that. Everything I can about say the same it. To you. Like I just I was like, she is you were in front of a million like a thousand it, of people. It, it, <laughs> it feels like millions. Yeah. But when you're up on stage, it feels like nobody. Nobody really? Oh, you can't see past the first row. Yeah, because it's so blinding. It's so with the blinding. Lights. But my first ever jingle ball, I quite literally shat myself. <laughs> I can only imagine. I was, well, growing up going to jingle ball, mm-hmm. like in being in the audience and being like, I'm gonna be on that stage one day. Mm-hmm. Because I thought I was going to be the next Britney Spears. Wait, so you feel lived you. my dream of like being a singer and like actress. I wanted to do that so bad. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be on that Jingle Ball stage one day. And by the grace of God, I did that, just not in the light that I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. So like for me, my first Jingle Ball, I was I fully blacked out. Yeah, and I, I was. Know. that's amazing, though, that you lived your dream. Thank you. And it's still like every Jingle Ball reignites that flame in mm-hmm. me a little bit. Like that feeling of like, oh, my God, like I did that. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's very it's very full circle, very homecoming, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, every year I like I, I feel like like my dreams come true so jingle ball to me is very very special very special day. I'm, everyone's like oh she's so extra on jingle ball no oh everyone here because they're like oh right she already has her i already have my outfit for jingle ball next year that's fine but like that's just how excited like i'm still that 10 year old girl that goes to jingle ball when i go to jingle ball well you get to meet so many different people mm-hmm. interview people i mean i went to the after party where at the um at Xfinity Live wait i was there too i know you well, were my body was there well i know that you were there my brain might not be <laughs> But you were talking to people, and I literally, I said to them, I was like, I want to go and introduce myself. Uh, Did you? Please tell me no, because I I don't remember. Okay, great. Because I didn't want, (laughs) 
I didn't want to bother you. I was like, Stop. wait, and guess what? I was like, ah, she's not going to even remember who I am. Thank God you didn't then. <laughs> That's what I said. No, I, said, I drank so fast it's in such okay. a short period of time. I was, I think I lasted maybe 30 minutes. That's fine. Okay. But I'm so glad you didn't introduce yourself then. But also <laughs> next time, please do. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm like, uh, I'll I'll see her at some point yeah. in life. I knew we would we would cross paths somehow. Damn. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm glad we did. Yeah. Okay. I, I would feel just... so much worse if we never did. Yeah. I, listen, this is great. Well, um, good. But who was your favorite person to ever interview? I mean, they you have tons of people who were there this year, mm-hmm. but out of your whole career so far, my whole career. See, that's where we that's where we dip into unfamiliar territory okay. because my radio career started in country music. So I read about that. You did? Yes, I did. Wait, you're reading about me? I Where? read about you. <laughs> <laughs> I found biographies. I Where? did. There was someone that wrote like an article um, about, about me? you. Yes. I got like a whole thing. And can you I, send me it? I can, yeah. I'm flattered. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope it was good things. Yeah. It was. Oh my God, I cursed. Are we allowed to curse? Yeah, she can okay, curse. Great. My I'm brother is so beep. <laughs> <laughs> Not me being in front of a microphone no. in my office and cursing. I love it. There's like something in my brain that switches off uh-huh. when I'm in front of a mic in this building. Mm hmm. I just got comfortable for a second. Good. I'm glad we're getting comfortable. I, this is great. Um, but I want to hear. Okay. Like, even if it's like someone I've never heard of before. It very well could be. Okay. Um, but this answer changes quite literally every time it, it's asked to me because I feel so grateful to have met so many different artists. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing like country music artists. Yeah. They are truly, and I grew up a pop pop girly because mm-hmm. I grew up listening to q and exactly. So when my first job in radio took me to country music, I did ask, ask my program director, who like hired me in my first radio job. I was like, are you sure? I'm like, I'm a Philly girl. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, we just love your personality. Like you'll like country music eventually. I'm like, hell no, I won't. Please. That's how I was until my husband like made my ears bleed with it. And then then I'm like, wait, I actually like this. Well, my grandpa was like someone who loved uh, Johnny Cash and and Willie Nelson. And that that was his stuff. Yeah. Like he loved that kind of stuff. And rock and roll is the, Foundation. So the found, thank you. The mm-hmm. the word. The foundation of all genres. All of genres. Music. Yep. So once I got into like country, first of all, I'm obsessed with it now. Still to this day, favorite genre. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think I'll ever grow out of that. Um, but I went to like Nashville for like a country music conference, and everyone's like, "Let's go to Kid Rock Bar." And this is when I'm still very like young and naive, and mm-hmm. like, I'm like, why the hell does Kid Rock have a bar in Nashville? That's not country. <laughs> and I got checked so quick. They're like, oh, sit your ass down, girlfriend. Let me teach you something. Yeah. And that he like he's rock and roll and rock and roll literally spearheaded country. It spearheaded a lot of what we listen to today, whether it be pop or whatever. It's just it's the foundation. <coughs> so I uh, now know why I love country music. I now know why I love all music. Um, but with that being said, I think of all the artists I've ever talked to. Country radio artists will always be the most genuine, appre- right? genuine mm-hmm. and appreciative of radio. Um, because it was the first ever platform for their music to be heard. And now obviously we have streaming platforms, we have TikTok, it's a whole bunch, but they go they they're they're grounded. They're the root. They love the tradition. They love I mean that's country. Yeah. So they're very, very appreciative of like record plays on the air, airplay and all that all the people that give them the time of day. Mm-hmm. Um for me, the person that I think will always just be like a wow is Garth Brooks. Um, I don't think. Wait, I, the name sounds familiar. You know, like Brooks and Dunn, Garth Brooks. Oh God, I don't know. I, I'm gonna gotta, gonna, we're gonna yeah. send you some stuff. Yeah, but he's just like he he's gonna be recognized as one of the greatest of all time sooner or later. I feel mm-hmm. like he's been kind of quiet lately, mm-hmm. but he's married to Trisha Yearwood, um, and they're like a dynamic country duo. He's also the biggest salesman for himself, and he does it well. Really? Oh, he's so good. He, I'm pretty sure he's a TV show now too. Like, he's the man. But he genuinely is. Probably bigger than life. We'll never admit to that. Um, But, like, had the opportunity to just bring me backstage. I brought, like, a girlfriend who, like, grew up, like, country girly. Her mom loved Garth Brooks. I was like, you need to come with me. I think this is, like, we're going to meet Garth Brooks. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always like to do is, like, give people an opportunity who will, like, cherish it and remember it forever who may not have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, why I feel so blessed and, like, privileged to do what I do. Mm -hmm. But I brought my friend backstage with me, and she's geeking out. And I couldn't even appreciate it at the time because I was just now getting into country music. So I'm like, yeah, go yeah, Brooks. Who? <laughs> After that interview, it wasn't even an interview. He like sat us down on his couch. He's like, so tell me about yourselves. I'm like, are Excuse we chit-chatting? <laughs> like, are, do you have somewhere to be, bro? You have a show to do. Yeah, and like what's just, happening? He just wanted to sit and chat on the couch. And I'm like, you have the time of day for me? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, because we grew up like with like a Britney Spears and oh, like yeah. 
Like, go, go, go. Go, go, You're go. You're in, you're out of yeah. the interview. Mm -hmm. Like, say what you got to ask, you got five minutes. And that's it. Yeah. But no, okay. country music is, like, laid back. Like, tell me about you. Like, how did you get here? They, like, they roll reverse that's on so you. That's crazy. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to answer to my, about myself. I came in ready to ask you questions. Did but, you go to Nashville a lot? Say it again? Did you go to Nashville a lot? Oh, Nashville a lot? No. Yeah. Um, for During, like, my country era? Yeah. No. More so bachelorettes, but I I went same. To like, yeah, I just went like in September. It's my favorite place in the world. Okay, so. I kind of wish I went for my thirtieth birthday. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so <laughs> me and you are yes. going to disagree on something. Oh no, here we go. Yeah, so not big on country music. That's right? okay. Um, I think that I didn't experience Nashville the way it should have been experienced. Um, a bachelorette is not the way to experience Nashville. Well, I recorded music in Nashville for a day and went home, so I didn't even get to experience it then either. <laughs> Wait, that's cool. Yeah. So you went on, like, Music Row. Yeah. I still mm -hmm. have yet to do that. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I recorded music in Nashville. Um, me and my dad, it was, like, the day after I got into a car accident. I have, like, a TNJ. My dad's like, you're recording this song. Yeah, nuts. Wait, why'd you have to go to Nashville to do it? It was a producer out there that I worked with, yeah. And I recorded out there. I traveled and recorded a few places. Oh, but dream. No, you're li living my dream. Oh, my God. Roll reverse. Okay, we can, we can do a Freaky Friday and just swap. <laughs> like, that would be so fun. Wow. Wow. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, well, you, there's definitely, there's no wrong way to experience Nashville. Mm -hmm. There's just multiple ways. Well, I went to Kid Rock. I actually enjoyed their Favorite bar. Um, oh, by the way, like, still my favorite bar. It was, it was cool. Like, I like the big stage that they had there. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they had oh, yeah. like, the levels. Like, yep. that was really cool being there. Um, I went to Miranda Lambert's mm -hmm. place. Uh, also very fun. Yeah. Um, I liked that at nighttime. I yeah. thought that that was really cool at night. Okay. But... I think that, like, I, I wanted to be on, like, that bus where people go by. Wait, I just did that back I didn't last October, and I was just going to say probably, like, the corniest thing you could do, but, but the, the most fun. People looked like they were having the best time of their life. I could have lived on that bus. I think Happily. that I would have had the greatest time. Oh, yeah. No. So if we're, we're going to Nashville. Like, we're, we're going. And we're going to go on the bus. So I'll give you the experience I had. You give me the experience you had. And I think and that will be the fulfillment. The fulfillment of Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> the Absolutely. fulfillment of Nashville. That's no. so fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Is there an artist that you didn't like to interview? Is that, like, controversial? I mean, she's already controversial as is. Who is it? I forgot. Oh, God. I feel like I'm not allowed to say this. Okay. All but right. I can. Okay. I Listen, all right. Um, I'm nervous. Not that, not, that, not that I didn't enjoy interviewing her. It's just they always... All right, let's avoid names and you can make assumptions as okay, well. Okay, gotcha. But I'll, I'll explain the scenario. Okay. Um, and it's just so funny because when people say, like, karma's a bitch. Yeah. Like, things that you do will come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. And that quite literally happened, I think, to this person. Um, but it was... It, ugh, I don't even know how to explain this without, like, selling anybody out. But... You know when, like, you just feel like you're the, you, people kind of, they tell you not to meet your heroes? Mm -hmm. I was so butthurt. There was a jingle ball one year, and I was so excited to interview this artist. And when I say interview, I say that very loosely because I'm not, like, an interviewer. Yeah. I'm, like, a conversationalist. Exactly. Like, I'd rather, like, chit-chat and get you comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get the answers exactly. to things that you didn't even intend to, like, ask. You mm -hmm. get something fresh and new. Because, like, if you go into, like, interviews asking people the same thing over and over, over again and that over. they've already heard... They're not going to give boring. you the time of day. Yeah. Exactly. It's boring for them. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'd rather just, like, go off on a tangent with an artist and then be like, oh, I remember you because we talked about this. Yes. So I went into that with that full perspective. And I, like, try and make the artists comfortable enough with me prior to that just to, like... Break the ice. Break the ice. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the red carpet backstage at Jingle Ball, and at this point I had met this artist a few times, and every time I had an interaction with them, it just wasn't... It, I felt like I was bothering them. I'm like... like it, one of their first songs had just come out years prior to that. They came to Philly for a radio tour, and we were in a car together for, I would say, like at least five to eight hours, roaming around Philly, hitting hot spots, like r running up and down City Hall, or I'm um, sorry, the Art Museum steps. Um, we're getting cheesesteaks at gyms, and it was just like, we gotta do this. We gotta do Wait, that. Are you kidding? No, no. And I'm like, listen, your song's hot, and like, love that for you, but I'm like, People don't know you yet. Like, you yeah. can't be doing all this. And they're like, oh, sorry, I'm just jet lagged. So I would try to give them benefit of the doubt. And then, uh, say, like, a year later, they have a show in Philly at the Met. And I go and meet them backstage. And I'm like, yo, like, this sure beats getting cheesesteaks, like, whatever, eight-hour mm -hmm. car rides, right? And they're like, I'm sorry, who are you? 
And I'm like, oh my God, I am such an idiot. Like I just, I, I try and bring like, I try and make each other memorable to one another. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So third time's a charm, right? They come back for Jingle Ball, obviously on a bigger stage this time around and they're big at this point. I think I'm like, Gonna, I'm not guessing now, but I'm guessing later who this person okay. is. Okay, okay. I mean, we'll leave it up for interpretation. Can make yes, it fun for the, yes, for the listener. Yeah. Um, but we we're backstage on the red carpet at Jingle Ball, and this person comes out, and without saying their name, I'm like, "Yo, mm-hmm. what's up, sis?" Yeah. Because that's how I address yeah. quite literally everyone and their mother. Uh-huh. Babe, sis, how are you? And they go, "Sis," up and down me like that. And she goes, what's your last name? And I, like, don't go by my last name. Yeah. Like, I'm, I go by, like, Rachel on the radio professionally. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, okay, like, Vigiano. I know, super Italian, right? Which is what I said, because mm-hmm. I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't want the cameras to know my last name. Yeah. But whatever. And she's like, uh, okay, yeah, more like distant cousins. And I'm like, is it? All right, everybody, now so-and-so. Like, I had in front of the camera, so I'm sure somebody has it on videotape somewhere. Wow. And I'm like, hold on. We could say a lot of things about this moment. Yeah. I'm just going to, like, you know, divert because, like, that's, I guess, what professionalism is. Uh-huh. But you know how us Italians yeah. from South Philly Wait, work. Wait, I'm getting angry. Oh. <laughs> I got fresh after that. I was yeah. sweating. I was like, oh, hell mm-hmm. no. Like, I, there's, like, only a part of me that can tolerate so much. Yeah. And I could go up to her and be like, you have to. Like, yeah, have, but you had to just let it go. They don't give a shit. They no. don't remember who I am. No, I so get it. It's That's the whole thing to say, like, don't meet your heroes. Because I was so excited yeah. to try and get a different reaction, and it just wasn't. It just wasn't a... No, but you know what? I don't want to also discredit. Like, I would love to meet Ariana Grande one day, and I mm-hmm. hope that she never disappoints me. Mm-hmm. But now I'm, like, Guess I'm what? Triggered. That was actually the person I was going to guess. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that was the person I was going to guess. Okay, no, I haven't met her yet. Well, okay, so that was the person. Oh, that would gut me because she's my queen. Wait, that was actually the person who I was guessing for you. But you're not far off in the trajectory of, like, it came back to bite him later on. Okay. We can leave it at that. Yeah, we're leaving it at that. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to tell me because now I'm at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> then we're going to go and fight them. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. We're going to find where they are and fight <laughs> That's them. That's how we yeah. We're about the hoops. Yeah, we're fighting them. <laughs> um, so what is your... Favorite song on the radio right now? Right now? Right now. Hmm. Oh, it has to be Beyonce's Texas Hold'em. So I had it's a feeling that you were going yeah. to say that because how nuts is it that she's doing country music right now? I have a theory. Okay. I love theories. Um, me too. Well, my first one, I think I she's now disproving with this new country era that she's in. Um, my first theory was that Beyonce was a hologram. I was like convinced she wasn't real because I never saw her doing like meet and greets with anybody or okay, anything. Yeah. Um, and I did see her in concert once, but I was so far like in the nosebleeds that I was like squinting. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is she really like, is she there? Yeah. <laughs> but that's obviously dramatic. Uh-huh. Um, no, my theory is that Beyonce is going to do something that no one in this world has ever done. And she's going to chart in every, every single, single genre. That is... She's gonna... I mean, not that she has anything to prove because she is the queen of all things. But it's just because she... Because she can do she it. Can. And she will. And she will be the first black woman ever to become number it. one in every chart. She's already hit dance. Mm-hmm. Um, she's charted for the past two weeks on country. Country. Um, she with, did pop. With pop, obviously. And then she also did um, R&B. Obviously. So, like, we have she's rock. She's in hip-hop. I think she, we're waiting for, like, a rock oh, metal... Yeah. I... I if she does that, we I are truly bringing will, this tape back. That's what I'm saying, but I will be gassed. Yeah. I, please, I wig snatch. What's what's yeah. throw the hat? Throw the shoe. Whatever I, it is, it, that's not. She is I truly the is, greatest of all time. I think this is like happening. Well, you want to know what's insane though is that she has all of these accolades mm-hmm. and has never gotten a Grammy for, for album uh, of the year. Yeah, that's what um, nominated four times, but has never won one. That is not still. But Taylor Swift does what? Have like 13, 14 Grammys? 13 has, Grammys. She has uh, now 14. 13 was the one before the record of the year. But she has four record of the years. I mean, pop off, sis. Like, you're doing something <laughs> right? right, apparently. But, like, Jay-Z wasn't wrong. So, Beyonce was someone who I idolized. Oh, yeah, me too. Like, I, like, all of her, like, dances. Oh, like, my God. Um, what was the one song that I used to listen was, like, a song I used to, like, belt I would, inside my I house. would actually pay money to hear you sing like, that. Like, I used to belt it in my... Wait, I have actually a video of me, like, 16 singing it. I'm gonna need that. I gotta send it to I'm you. I'm gonna need it. My mom is, like, the last concert I did, she goes, you have to do listen. I'm like, I can't get her that high anymore. Yeah. <laughs> my voice does not work that way. It's a I'm little rusty. But, yeah, she was, like, the, the, her... 
um, Whitney Houston, Ugh. like um, even Christina Aguilera. Those like, are your musical they, expos? Yeah, they, they were the ones who I was like, I like I just loved everything also like about how Beyonce owned the stage. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was Jingle Ball in 2006 mm-hmm. that she was there because a friend of my brother's got us tickets to go and she was um, performing there. Okay. Or it was just a concert. But I saw I'd like Beyonce. to say it was Jingle Ball. I, I would like to say it was, <laughs> but all I know is that Q102 was the reason why I went and saw Beyonce. I love that. For the first time. Okay. And um, it was just really like incredible. And I kind of get a little upset, not upset. I kind of get a little, um, I don't even know the word when I watch. Disappointed? No, when I watch concerts, like it hits me hard in the gut sometimes. Do you have post concert depression? Yeah, like. Because I, I definitely do. Yeah, like I just, I want to be up there so, so bad. That, oh, I feel the same way. You know, and like I'm just like, mm-hmm. like I'm just like, and I'm, I'm sitting, like everyone else is like, yeah, in a concert, and I'm just like watching mm-hmm. everything that they're doing. And yeah. I'm like, I wish this was me. No, you, and you then I just saw you on there, right? I'm and I'm like, I wish I was right. I, just, <laughs> I mean, we are literally like, the same person. I just, I like, I just, everything about like just being in front of a camera mm-hmm. <laughs> and a crowd does something to me. I, I'm high on life for like a year. Oh, I mean, I'm still <laughs> elated off of Jingle Ball, yeah. so I can totally understand it yeah. for what it's worth. Like, those things kind of come unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, obviously, that was like always a goal of mine. But I think, like, as I kind of just, like, ran the course of, like, life and, like, trying to pursue what it was that, like, I was so passionate about, Mm -hmm. these things kind of, like, these opportunities, like, fall into my lap. And it smacks me in the face every time. Because I just feel like, you know when people say, like, you hit the ground running? Yeah. I feel like when I got my job at Q102, I was so underqualified. But, like, I'm saying that about myself because, like, I graduated college and I told myself, like, in 10 years, I'm going to be on Q102 one day. And that's... The words that came out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to be back in Philly in my hometown on the air on Q102. Give myself 10-year plan. Yeah. And which is, that's a great plan. Right. By the grace of God, did it in three. Wow. So I, I, I just felt like because it wasn't on the trajectory that I thought I was going and it was sooner. I'm like, do people really see something in me that I don't think I have yet? Or like... Mm-hmm. Am I just lucky? And I battled that a lot, like a lot. That's I, how I, I thought when I was when I was younger. Too. I hate feeling like, and the biggest insult you can probably give me in life, which I've heard before, is someone telling me that I'm I'm just lucky, or that I'm privileged. And like I understand that, like obviously, like with like how I was raised and where I grew up, I have privileges that others may not have. Mm-hmm. But I would never say that I was handed. No, you my worked oppor- hard. I. You I truly school, can say hard. that now, being so proud of where how far I've come, that like I busted my ass. Yeah, I didn't get into like Syracuse's Newhouse School of Communications right away. Mm-hmm. I had to apply undecided, and then get a, a two or sorry a three point eight GPA to get into the Newhouse School. Okay. My freshman year of college, while also trying to be in a sorority and get acclimated into being three hundred miles away from home, four yeah. five hundred. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of different ways, and I'm sure people will say like, oh well, at least you got to go to college. Everyone has their own battles. Yes, everyone has their own battles, their own stories. Right. You're everyone lives a different life. Totally. And um, I don't like when people discredit people for what they've what they've done and how hard they've worked. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone has you know their own script written in the book for them. Totally. And, and you're you're living it. You're Thank you're you. doing your thing. And um, I mean, I'm proud of you. This is Thanks. amazing. I, I, like I said, I just met you, but no, and it feels it's, so good it's to hard, hear. It's hard work. Thank it's you. not, it's not easy stuff. Like there's some people who, you know, they work hard and they go to school for this stuff and then they don't, they end up not doing it, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just an amazing thing that, you know, you're doing something that you love. Thank you're you. going to work and enjoying it because there's many people who, who do, don't do that. Well, and that's the key. My mm-hmm. my biggest advice to anyone, is especially like people like yeah. you and I who yeah. like see something and know that we would be so good at it had mm-hmm. the like opportunity presented itself. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I could suggest is that you need to have the utmost faith in yourself and know your worth because there are going to be so many people down the line who will tell you like, you know, Give it a few more years. You got Mm -hmm. it. Or like, oh, yeah, but like, you know, just kind of shoo you off. But if you know you have that passion, you know that you could do it, do it. Do it. And then eventually kind of like these these things just start happening. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like God's working up there and it just starts falling into place. And I'm just so grateful. And like I there are parts of me that feel lucky that like, you know, my path aligned quicker than I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. 
But I don't think anyone should say like, oh, it's just luck. No. No, you have to bust ass. There's like it they all kind of coincide with one another. A thousand percent. Yeah. And everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. And this is your reason. Like you're here to make people happy and while they're while they're driving in their car, hear I your hope. voice, you I know. Hope, you know yeah. and your reels are awesome. Thanks. Um I saw on your online uh that you had your thirtieth birthday. Uh, yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still I'm still processing. Wait, I when people ask me how old I am, I don't remember sometimes. Okay, yeah, I'm I like still I feel... am how old? Um, thirty. Uh -huh. Oh God. Yeah, no, I still feel I think like twenty six. Yeah, right. I don't know. I just I, and people call it like um I saw it on TikTok like the pandem pandemic skip. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. Right, your yeah, brain like is still years mentally. Are just not... Well, three years, four years flew by that yeah. like are unaccounted for. You know what That's I mean? That's true. So like yeah. we're still mentally at the age that we were before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I heard it on TikTok and it sits with me no, like yeah. free. So I'm like, how long will I still feel 26? Please, I wish I was back in high school. Oh my god. I, if I, I was back it sometimes. <laughs> me too. If I was back in high school, I would do so many things differently. I say that all the time. I'm like, had like myself now met me back in high school? Oh my god, no. Oh my god, I I would tell so many people to f off me too oh my god please i was called a beach whale on my music video like on a beach yeah me like, too in fifth grade someone I'll called die. me a beach whale wait i'll die I, what I'm is happening even, with I, our lives we're, sim we're so we're so similar <laughs> like this is nuts yeah i love it it was on i posted my music video i was in um ocean city uh-huh and we did it was like a it was called play thing the video and i was on a beach and i threw like the uh the ring in the ocean it was about like whatever relationship stuff i love that and someone put on there she's a beached whale and at that time, like, I was uh, not heavy. <laughs> a, a, like, a guy, like, a label oh, guy. Oh, a, a guy said it? Oh, yeah, guys, yeah. A label guy. Uh, when I was on the phone with my dad, like, speaker, they said um, I was 13 years old. I'll never make that it. That video was from when you were 13? No, no, no. Oh. Um, when I was 13 years old, I okay. was in the car. I was just leaving soccer practice, heading into the recording studio. My dad mm. was on the phone with a label guy. And it was right when I started, 13, 14. And he said to my dad... Um, you know, she's going to have to lose some weight. She's never going to make it in this industry if what? she doesn't lose weight. An old school mindset. Oh my! I mean, just think that was in 2007, right? Ew. Yeah, so here I am, mm -hmm. like just got done soccer practice, heading to the recording studio. After that, I was going to the gym twice a day. Mm -hmm. I was eating 500 calories. I was making myself sick. Uh. Like just the mindset of that. And then yeah. you had like someone like Adele come out, right? Mm -hmm. Before she got really, really skinny. Right. And I would look and I would say, I worked so hard to get thin. Mm -hmm. And this is now what's happening. I, I mean, her voice is the most amazing thing in the world. Well, um, um, don't discredit yourself. So is yours. Like, thanks. But like, <laughs> she's just amazing. Right. Um, I get it, my I husband get it. goes, I love Adele. I'm like, me too. Same. <laughs> Who don't doesn't? Um, but I'm just like, oh, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. All that work, I was like starving myself. I was eating like an orange. I remember an orange Activia yogurt. <laughs> Activia, not the Activia. <laughs> the Activia yogurt and I'm granola. Crying. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, I empathize with you actually now. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm like, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. like doing certain things, but when you get older, yeah. your body changes. Please, even after having a kid. Oh, I could imagine. Yeah, it's like traumatizing. Well, the way that the, like, the, sorry to get all like yeah. female body, but yeah. like it's such an ever changing thing to a point where even my boyfriend's like, y'all are crazy. Yeah, it's but, like, bad. In, like not in like a mentally, like yeah. the, the way the body works is insane. First yes. of all, the fact that we can produce a child is insane. Crazy. And yes, this is where my mind goes now because in 30, apparently you have, you're an adult and you have to have babies. And yeah. Do like, everything just, all at once. Please, it's driving me out of my mind. I'm so stressed. Sleepless nights. I, I can imagine. <laughs> um, but so, I mean, with that, like, we're from like, yeah. South Philly. Like yeah. our, our parents are very mm -hmm. much so like traditional. Like yes. rub some dirt on it. You don't need medication for this, this, and this. No. So mm -hmm. like being on birth control, my dad was losing his goddamn mind. Please, I was on birth control and it was like for acne and stuff, yeah. right? And for like cysts and everything. And my dad was like not the happiest camper. Well, I didn't even know my dad knew that I was on it. And um, he's neither like, did, neither did I. Tell right. my mom must have broke the news. <laughs> well, I got a call from my dad literally like last year, and he was like, I just, you know what? I've been thinking about Rach. You've been on birth control for almost 15 years. And I'm like, this well, was not the phone call I thought I was getting what? today. It's yeah. happening. I'm like, but I guess you're not wrong. And he's like, I want grandkids someday. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, okay. And he's like, but like, if you're, if you've been on it, like, you don't know how your body works off of birth control. I was mm -hmm. like, you're right. Cause that would bring me back to like my adolescence. I don't know how my body worked yeah. back then. So I was like, all right, maybe like, I'll just get off of it. Yeah. Worst decision in my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. No. Within the past year, I've not only gotten, Older than I have in the span of 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
I've gained an absurd amount of weight, mm-hmm. and I've I'm working out twice a day. I'm yeah. tracking my macros. I feel like I'm doing everything right. But the body's just like, ha, you thought. So, like, that was the opposite for me. I was on birth control. I gained a ton of weight, mm-hmm. right? Um, I could not lose it at yeah. all. I got off of birth control, found out I had celiac disease. Oh, my I God. I lost 40 pounds instantly. I was in the best shape of my life. Best shape. Um, I got pregnant. I then had a miscarriage. Oh, so then I stopped working out. It's okay. It was, like, really quick. It was, yeah. like, one of those, like, chemical pregnancies, they called yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah. I've heard of that. So then um, two months later, I got pregnant with my son. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't feel him because I had an anterior placenta, right? So um, what happens there? So many things. So many things. I can help you. (laughs) Um, So pretty much what happened was um, I couldn't bond with the baby. Didn't know the gender, nothing. um, Like mentally or like? Mentally. I could not. So all I kept thinking about is I'm gaining weight. Oh, shoot. So like, I'm going to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it was like really, really killing me. Not many people talk about this. Yeah. People are like, oh my God, I love pregnancy. I hated it. Hated every minute of pregnancy. Speak on that. Yeah, I'm like, so I like, hated, talking about that. Oh, I am. Good. I hated every minute of being pregnant. I did not enjoy it. Um, like I said, I couldn't feel the kicks or anything. I was mm-hmm. going to the doctors constantly. Um, do I regret it? Absolutely not. My son is my whole entire world. Aww. Like he is. But um the weight gain got me. Oh, yeah. Yes. Especially being like, yes. like us growing up, feeling yeah. like we yeah. always had to lose weight. We fluctuated mm-hmm. in our weight, and weight was this, that, and the other thing. And when it you're in this so kind much. of business, too. Totally. Um, so now, like, I, I started finally working out again, like, taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. I'm still gluten-free. I, I can't lose that 20 pounds, though. Yeah. So it's like the um like the lower end of your stomach, right? Yep. Like, sometimes I'm like, I just want to cut it open and uh, sew it back together. Literally, <laughs> we're the same. I'm it's freaking It's the lower out. end. Like, yeah. but um, being a female, like, it's just really, like, I, I say to my husband, I'm like, you're just so lucky. I know. Like, you don't have to deal with any oh of this stuff. Oh, my God. It's, it's like, so hard to be a girl, and I know that, like, I mean, people will be like, but love it. And mm-hmm. it's hard, especially, like, when you grew up your whole life having... You know, that constant yeah. battle with yourself of mm-hmm. feeling like, you know, you were too big to do this. Yes. Or, like, people would think this about you. And, mm-hmm. like, the perfect idea of beauty is being this big. And that's a lot of the reason why I also pursued radio. I love your message. Like, the, you when you I said mean? that, like, with your grandma, I love the whole message. Mm-hmm. I need to see your tattoo later. Oh, like, yeah. I need to say it. Uh, hey, she's say? I can hear how beautiful you are. That's so beautiful. I'm, I'm, I needed that reminder. Because, yes. like, you don't, I, and again, circling back, you don't mm-hmm. need to be... The perfect, like the picture perfect exactly. image of beauty to mm-hmm. be beautiful. And as much as I always tell myself, you know, like, I love yourself. And yeah. as much as everyone portrays it. We don't, we don't listen to ourselves. Can't. No. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe one day I will. But right now it's not the time. Right, <laughs> it's not happening. Right now I'm struggling. <laughs> but I mean, we'll get there. And every, yeah. like, I mean, women should always uplift other women. Exactly. Men need to learn to do the same as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there are men out there who are able to help us do that. But there's no better or no bigger battle than the one within you a thousand percent and i think it's just a matter of like you know we'll practice what we preach one day (laughs) yeah you can have so many people say like um you know you're perfect this set and the other but like if you don't feel it yourself you're not going to believe it at all and um like i said not many people talk about it yeah um but it's the truth like woman empowerment is like no other oh Um, yeah like a while ago like that wasn't a thing no. it's just like something new that like i'm feeling like everyone's like very supportive of each other mm-hmm. and like back you want to know what i it was not oh it, no not <laughs> at all not at all no and you know what there's still people out there hey, my stomach's dead ground and i ho- hope that this does not hear i don't hear it <laughs> good <laughs> how embarrassing Wait, are you hungry no i'm good i can't eat half of the stuff that's probably in this joint anyway i so. mean you can drink this wine <laughs> it's all right that'll be uh, a <laughs> cal- drink your calories drink your say. calories <laughs> i'm dead give me a piece of gum maybe that'll stop my stomach from growling. i'm cracking up <laughs> that's what i used to do too Wait, I I attempted to do gluten free this year. Oh, did you? How'd yeah. that work out for you? I'm still fat. Stop. <laughs> Wait, did you eat gluten free stuff? And um, you were not fat at all. No, thank you. No, I, that was um, being dramatic. Yeah, but, but did you um, eat gluten free things? I've been doing it for like since January because I'm like trying to f- see what like why I can't lose the, mm-hmm. the pooch. Yeah, but I'm just I'm I'm open to exploring different options as to like how my body because you're it's ever changing so I don't know like the right answers as to yeah. like, things that used to work for me now don't. Yeah, it's, oh my so god, it's just being thirty. Yeah, no, it's literally just the. That's like the ongoing battle. But what I find, going back to like the women empowerment thing, yeah. what I find so interesting, and this happens to more people than not, is that our biggest insecurities are the most attractive qualities to other people. I agree. Yeah. Like I always grew up, and this is not me flexing, but like I grew up <laughs> hating my butt. I always, I always thought. Because then you would think that you were fat. Well, they'd be like, damn girl, that ass is fat. Yeah. And like pH fat. Yes. And I'm like, hold the fact that I said pH fat just 
<laughs> I'm such a millennial. <laughs> I hate myself. That'll bring us <laughs> to our little <laughs> quiz thing that we got going on later. <laughs> but no, like I grew up thinking, like I heard, all I heard was fat. All I heard was fat. So yeah. Fat. Wait. Oh, we're and loving I, the same life. It was life. like when J Lo's butt was like mm-hmm. a thing, and I'm like, well, wait, do I want a J Lo butt? No, yeah. No, no. So I just like now always, we embrace it. Well, I'm still learning to embrace it. But I'm like, embracing so, it. <laughs> good. Okay, teach me your ways. I'm embracing it. No, I mean, it's still a, a battle with me, mm-hmm. but I'm learning to love her more and more every yeah. day. Mm-hmm. She is her own freaking her own galaxy, thing. let alone <laughs> her own entity. Well, then it makes us feel like our pant size are so much bigger because our hips are so big. We are so complicated, and hearing it out loud from somebody else's mouth is so, so yeah. funny. Because I look exactly at my size, and I'm like, there's no way. And I'm then I'm like, person. you know, me too. I'm very validated by oh a number on a scale. Oh, my God. It's such a far-fetched concept, the BMI scale. Yeah. The, um, wa- the weighted scales. I just can't do it. I go to a trainer now. My husband got me 15 sessions. Like, honestly, like, great thing mindset-wise, but I'm, like, still a mm-hmm. lunatic. And I'm like, yeah, like, let me step on the scale. And the guy's like, no. Do not, if you want, um, do, like, the measurements around your inches and yeah. stuff like that. And I'm like, mm, good idea, but I'm still going to step on the scale. Know, isn't and so I still did not lose a pound. There's <laughs> a scale out now sessions. that will, you step on it, it'll show you, like, your your fat percentage and, like, the, the weight of fat versus, mm-hmm. like, the weight of your muscle, which I think I need. Because if yeah. we're so validated by numbers, at least let us know what. Okay, so, like, let me know when you find that. I'm going <laughs> to, it's on my TikTok shop. Okay. I'm just kidding, I don't have that. But I sh- <laughs> Is that a thing? I guess now I should. Yeah, TikTok shop is a thing. You are teaching me a lot about social media today because I did not know half of this stuff. It's the kids that keep us young. Yeah, right? They, they do. <laughs> Please, they, they rule the world, not us. Oh, my God, TikTok rules, rules yeah, the world. Yeah, about when you see, um... Third, what's it say? The hashtag, uh, people thirty and up, or something like that. Or did you see that? Doesn't the fact that it... I have to like now categorize myself into that right? bracket is like very right. <laughs> I had such a hard time breaking up with my twenties because they were so good to me. Yeah. But I've heard and I see it now, especially. I know this is terrible, but when I think of the Kardashians, this is very real. Mm-hmm. Forty is the new thirty. This is true. And thirty is the new twenty. Yes, I see it with a lot of people though. Like that, like people are like thriving. Oh yeah. I mean, to, I'd like to think that I'll, I'll hopefully continue mm-hmm. my, like, thrive stride. Mm-hmm. But um, I feel like I'm getting more and more comfortable as the day goes by with mm-hmm. being, like, you know, 30, flirty, and thriving. But your birthday party. See, wait, you're going to die right now. Like, okay. You have to really look at this. I literally put <laughs> the wait. questions. I'm crying. 30, no. flirty, and, and thriving. thriving. <laughs> okay? All right. Wait. I'm dead. Not. Okay. So. I did hit that camera. Mm-hmm. Um. Tell me about your 30th birthday. Yes. What I would mean, you like to know? I want to know about the whole thing. And, like, I just love that you did stuff with charities. Thank you. Charities are a big thing for me. Uh, me too. Especially when it comes to animals. Yes. Very big animal mm-hmm. lover. I was, um, well, I was a foster for Philly Rescue Angels. That's so nice. It was so much fun. I, like, made it to four dogs before I completely epic foster failed. <laughs> Why did you epic foster fail? Oh, because this, uh, first of all, every dog that would come and go, I, I'd only have them for, like, two weeks. And you would, you would feel like a... Attached. Attached, Oh my god! Because they're I liked with like working with the puppies, Mm -hmm. um, just because like I don't know they're babies, baby puppies. And I love showing them off, and like it it made also like getting them adopted so much easier. Mm -hmm. So like the turnaround time was like two weeks for me. Yeah. But like within that two weeks, I would fall in love, and like I would cry like I was being broken. The first foster we had. I, if the way that I would react when I got a text from the new adopted mother, I felt like I was getting a text from my ex. Like it gives you that like butterfly feeling. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, like texting me. Like I, my, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just very attached to animals, mm-hmm. but I love working with Philly Rescue Angels. And um, in my foster experience with them, they'd always send uh, send us to Emancipet, which is low cost, high quality animal care for pets in need, families who, you know, may not be able to front that vet bill at like, you know, an expensive yeah. vet or whatever. So you get the same quality of care for less. And I like that's where obviously the, the rescue would send them to because it's a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that's I mean, that's great. Um, I loved their initiative. They took care of the dogs and I got very like familiar with them and everyone there was always so kind. The facility was very clean and great. Um, and then circa, you know, four years later, here we are with an event through iHeart with Emancipet. And I'm like, oh my God, I've worked with you guys before, like with Philly Rescue Angels. And they had this event that I was like hosting, um, that I didn't put together. I was just like, I show up and I like host it. And I guess the event didn't go off, like, they didn't get the attendance they wanted to just mm-hmm. because it was supposed to be, like, an NFL, like, Eagles game day watch party. Gotcha. And that Eagles game got moved. Of course. Thanks, NFL. Yeah. So, like, it wasn't an Eagles watch party anymore, and not a lot of people attended. And the woman who coordinated it with Emancipate was, like, kind of butthurt. She was mm-hmm. just like, oh, I kind of wish we had more people. And I was like, how about this? I wanted to pretend my 30th birthday was not happening. 
Um, but if we're gonna, you know, do something, might as well make it worthwhile. I said, why don't we copy and paste this event and just call it my 30th birthday? I'll bring the people so you yeah. can like, guarantee like you're people. gonna get a turnout and you like you literally just do everything, whatever else. Um, but then I also, you know, kind of wanted to have Rachel's flair on it. So I got like decorations mm-hmm. and I also work a lot with local small businesses and like vendors around the tri-state who like have always provided me like the most amazing services and I want to shine a light on them too. I like being very local. Yeah. So I always call them, I call it Rach's Rex, like my recommendations. Wait, that's cute. Thank you. I love that. Um, But that's why I post like more so on my socials. Like that's where you'll find like a lot of the places that I'll recommend for you in the tri-state for like beauty, lifestyle, all that fun stuff that I also resonate with. So I've I was, like, looked at half of your stuff and <laughs> I've I'm like, oh, my God, I love the spa thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why I just want to, like, shine a light on the businesses that have always been so gracious with me. And I was like, you know what? Like, why don't we just turn this event into, like, the big hurrah? Like, either, like, you know, close 20s out with a bang, start 30s off with, like, a bang. Like, yeah. this is the way to do it. And I want to get all my people in one place. Mm-hmm. So I brought all in, like, some of my favorite Rach's Rex. Um, they donated services for raffles, that of which those raffle ticket donations went directly towards Emancipet. Um, this is so great. It was so fun. It was just really cool. It was really cool to watch it all come together mm-hmm. and like see every aspect of my 20s kind of like come in to life. In one room, like in one room. And I like, love that. We raised over $2,100. That's nice. Which I didn't expect. Yeah. And I was just like, that's that's the greatest gift I could have gotten, I think, especially if I like was so, in so much denial of my 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, you know what? If we're going to do it, this is like the gift that I want. It's not even a matter of like getting people to come out and celebrate me. It was more so to like know that I did something for a good cause. So we, you know, party for a purpose. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a big animal person too. Yep. My uh, my dog is my son. Oh, yeah. He's my firstborn. Uh, no, dead ass. I said if my, if my dog, like my childhood, or not my childhood dog, my dog that I got in college, mm-hmm. when she passes away, bury me. Yeah. It's, it's six feet under. Yeah. Um, my husband said yesterday, he's like, yeah, you have a dog from like, you have a dog and like between eight years old to 15 years old like that's kind of like the question mark like are they going to pass away i went excuse me (laughs) hank is seven hank is seven years old do not say that to me that's so funny and he's like no seriously i gotta mentally prepare you for this now and i went true we're not talking about this see that's so funny you say that because that's where we we differ Mm -hmm. like my dog's eight years old Mm -hmm. and i cry she's only eight like I'm, i'm sure i'm i'm sure we still have more time yeah but I'll cry on the dot if you ask me to so thinking about it. Before I had my son, mm-hmm. that's how I would be. Just like looking at my dog. And then it would make me really depressed. Oh. And I'm like, I can't do this to myself. I cannot. Please, my brother's listening to us right now. And he's probably like, he's like my, my dog. Oh, no. Oh, okay. my, my dad's like, he's like, it's just a dog. No, not him. I'm dead. His dog's like 15. I took her to the groomer today. Like, oh, poor she's babe. living that lavish nun life. Oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my poor Coco. Um, but yeah, it's just animals are a part of your family. Oh my God, it's like, the unconditional love. It is. Oh. Like they they just they just love you. Oh yeah. You can walk out of the room one second, come back and they're so excited to see you. It's that perpetual feeling of like something needs me. Mm-hmm. And like th- that's like the most I mean, maybe that's like the like a female nurturer in me. Mm-hmm. But like Feeling like I am something's whole world. Exactly. I'll cry. I can't yeah. talk about it. Okay. We need to get off the topic. <laughs> our, our dogs are our world. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, this is great. That's um, too funny. So, yes. We need to talk about union. Yes. I want to know about how you became a host for the Philadelphia Union, mm-hmm. like how it differs between live in front of a whole crowd hosting and then doing radio. Yeah. No, great questions because to me, like it all kind of like, again, one of those things that like, fell into my lap and I'm so grateful um the union when they first came back to Philadelphia they were here for a little bit sons they I think I think like honestly I think the the program or the club like ended and what our like ride or die fan base is called the sons of Ben they petitioned to get the MLS to reignite the Philadelphia Union back in Philadelphia was it called the Philadelphia kicks back then or was that the indoor soccer that team? was indoor soccer I believe okay I sung there when or I was soul. 11 it was called the Philadelphia kicks when I was 11 but I believe it was indoors, I think it's indoors. and it was soccer but this is the Philadelphia kick so it went away for a little bit it went away for a little bit and okay. then came back so okay. about like I think this is well this will be my third season with with the union oh nice I didn't know that it was that that long yeah okay but um, I th- I believe oh, shoot I should know the answer to this, but they've been I think I want to say like five ish years. Okay, very well could be wrong. Um, but five years ago, I actually through iHeart was asked to come and do like a guest hosting experience. 
Um, it was like 90s night, so like, you know, this 90s Love baby it. was like thriving. Yeah. Um, and it was just supposed to be like, you know, like a fun, like one and one and done kind of thing. And I I guess I made an impression because every time we would work with the union after that, obviously like small gigs, it wasn't like in the arena mm-hmm. or in the stadium, but small gigs like, you know, just hosting like parties or like interviewing the the uh, players. Um, they would always like chirp in my ear, like Rach, like you know, one day when we have like when we do like a full game day show thing, like we would love to have you as our host. We're just like we're working on it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, 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 bet. Never really thought that would come to fruition. And one day it kind of just presented itself, and I couldn't have been more thrilled because I always said if radio took me to TV, then great. Yeah. Um, and here we are on Apple. I so this is amazing. It was it's so much fun, and I. I mean, as you can tell, I'm very much an energy, like, person-to-person gal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, given my radio show is just me talking to a microphone and a wall all day, I picture people like you. I picture the people I grew up with Mm -hmm. listening as well, and it makes it easier for me to talk to a microphone. But had I been, or have I, like, be on a show format, I think I wouldn't shut up, clearly. Um, Same. Yeah. Oh, so I say it all the time. I'm like, I can talk to a brick wall. Oh yeah, no, I quite literally do. Yeah, you you do. I do. <laughs> you actually I quite literally talk, talk to, to a, a wall brick wall <laughs> all day. So if that gives you any justification yeah. as to how I am on game days at Subaru Park with thousands of fans in mm-hmm. the stadium, euphoric. Yeah, it's, it's I'm very much feeding off the energy people give me, um, and it makes the job so much easier because like obviously like you go in and you have things that you need to say, mm-hmm. and it is like a lot more pressure like Jingle Ball is different because you have like 30 seconds and then you're off. This is the whole game. This is the whole game. Mm-hmm. And obviously when they're playing in between halves, you don't talk. But yeah. like you're doing pregame shows. You're in front of the whole stadium. Like you are a focal point majority of the time. So initially I was absolutely petrified. And now it's just like I look forward to it. Yeah. yeah. My cousin, she's a huge fan of the union. She yeah. goes all the time. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. She's a, we're, my whole family, we're big soccer people. I, I played for 18 years. Get out. Yeah. Wait, you got to tell me when you go to a game. Yeah, well, I don't go to the game, so now I'm going to tell my cousin to bring me instead of her boyfriend. Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> my uncle. Wait, no, you got to come. We make yeah, it fun. Yeah, yeah. I would love to go. Um, I saw that uh, Jason Kelsey was there. Yeah. I so saw your post about that. We do uh, drum striker. So, like, you what know how the, the Sixers do the bell, the person who rings the bell before yes. each game? Mm-hmm. We have a giant drum that we have, like, a local Philly celebrity or, honestly, any anyone kind of of stature, like, mm-hmm. in the area, um, come and bang the drum before the games. So Jason Kelsey was one of them. But we've had a few. Was that like a really cool experience? Oh, it's my favorite part of the... (laughs) Given like the whole game is so exciting. But I always ask them not to tell me who the drum striker is. So I'm just as excited as like people in the audience is. That's fun. It is. But then I realize like, okay, I could have better prepared for this one. Because I'm not like interviewing them. It's just seeing them. Yeah. So I'm like... Could have done my makeup better than uh-huh, that. Right? So uh-huh. That's why I try and make sure that I'm just like good on game days because mm-hmm. it, it's I like I'm a fan girl before anything else. Yeah. Same with Q and O too. Mm-hmm. Like if I get a chance to interview an artist, as professional as it may come off in my interviews, just know deep down inside that ten year old is You're screaming. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and being like from Philly or like from South Jersey, mm-hmm. like seeing like people like Jason Kelsey come out and strike the drum, geeking out. Yeah, I'm geeking like, out. Like are you kidding? So, so I cried I like my eyes out. That like childhood, like that nostalgic, like. I'm giddy, you know yeah. what I mean. So I like being surprised. That's awesome. Yeah, I cried my eyes out during his um, retirement. I couldn't watch it. I had to shut it off, and I've been watching clips, and I just like put my phone down for like five minutes, and then find the next one. My dad had it on, so I had no choice. Yeah, and yeah. I just him crying, then his brother, then his mom, the, then the, the, they them all crying. I can't. It caught me, dude. It was Travis crying for me. Uh, it was like oh, that heart was my wrenching. husband. That was my husband for like <laughs> before Taylor. Come came on, picture. Taylor. I know. Like, are you kidding me? Head. It's this fine. Is, I, I could go off, but I'm not going to. Oh, let's. <laughs> mm. I think that you would have had a lot more fun with him, okay? I think he would have had a lot more fun with me. I uh, see. Look. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll respect it. All right. Um, but no, I, and that's the other like interesting part of working in radio, especially like that happened at 1 p.m. during my show. So mm. I have to be tentative to like, you know, broadcast what's happening because yes. that's a big Philly moment. Mm-hmm. So there are times like working in radio, like obviously, like I got into it because it was entertaining and I wanted to be a light for people. But then there are those times where like shit pops off. And, yeah, like, you gotta be the you gotta be the breaker of bad news. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And given you know could have been worse than Jason Kelsey having to retire. Yeah, and there have been moments, especially mm-hmm. during the pandemic, and yeah, you know rioting and protesting. That's not fun stuff to talk about. But was that hard during the pandemic? Awful. Um, yeah. Awful. Now, did you work from here or did you have to work from home? Little did we know that 
you could broadcast out of your basement. Really? Oh, yeah. Pandemic taught us a lot in radio. We had no idea that you could work like, I mean, other than like syndicated shows like Elvis Duran, who has Froggy broadcasting from Florida while everyone else is in New York. Yeah. Um, we learned very fast that we could also do the same. I mean, and the technology still grows. Yeah. Um, so I was broadcasting from home for a while. Um, and then when things kind of lightened up, I, I chose to come back in here because you you need to get a change of scenery. Totally. And you feel more like this is like your home for radio. Right. Yeah. And I started to look at like my house as like my place of work, mm -hmm. uh, my my gym. So like I would walk like the place where I would work out in my in, like in my house. I'd walk past that room and feel immediate anxiety thinking that like, oh, I got to work out today. You know what I mean? Or yeah. I'd walk past my studio and be like, shoot, I have to record something. So I didn't want my place of comfort to turn into like a place of like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. It happened to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like that. They felt like um, their house was. Oh, yeah. They felt like they couldn't leave their home. Yeah. Oh, the amount of anxiety. I got to be honest. I thrived during COVID. I was going to say, I kind of wish it was better. Wait, I thrived. <laughs> I like that there was no parties. Oh, my God. Uh, like, I'm like an extroverted introvert. I'm the same exact way. Yeah. I'd rather be home and have people come to my house and, mm -hmm. like, you know, hang out there than go to a club or a bar. Oh, yeah. It's just not for me. Um, mm -hmm. But... I'm very loud and outgoing, oh, so yeah. it's like so weird, like that I that I'm it's like the comfort that. thing. Yeah, like, and don't get me wrong, like there's some days where I'll like text my boss and be like, "Hey, like, can I just work from home today?" Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it's easier to work from the office just because, like, obviously we have everything we need yeah. here and it's much smoother. But like, there's something so nice about the like the leisure of like working from home. Just it, to know, maybe it's for people. Like a lot of people still work remotely from the pandemic. Yeah, I don't so, know how. I, mean, I would go nuts. I mean, I would do exactly what everyone should be doing, that of which is traveling to somewhere nice and doing the work from wherever the right? heck that is. Like, let's go to Florida. <laughs> I, know a friend, I have a friend that just did a, a whole month in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. That's smart. It's genius. That I'm is like, really one, smart. You know, one day. One day. That's the American dream. That That's the way to go. <laughs> right. they, they're doing something right. Absolutely. <laughs> they are doing something right. Absolutely. Um, so I... We're going to talk about the 90s and, okay. like, the 2000s. Okay. Oh, let's play a game. I love games. Me too. Okay. All right. <laughs> Woohoo. All right. So this is just a this or that okay. uh, 90s, 2000 edition. Mm -hmm. Just there's only five questions. Okay. Okay. Backstreet Boys or NSYNC? NSYNC. Oh, me too. Easy. I had, like, the little dolls. Mm -hmm. that, um, What are they? Like, the Barbie dolls, like, of them. And I was not allowed to touch them. But Lance got ruined, so they're probably Lance not worth... Lance was my favorite. They're probably not worth any money now. Oh, don't say that. Don't <laughs> say that. I actually... <laughs> I still have them. Wait. Honestly, peak moment in my career is getting drunk with Lance Bass and Joey Fatone. Wait, are you kidding? Not I'm obsessed. Um, probably my, one of my, f my first or second year in... Uh, I don't want to say working for Q and O two and then associate it with being drunk, but it was at the pool after dark, and that uh -huh. it was it was after our, both of our gigs. Yeah. So I heard that Joey Fatone is like very like down to earth and very funny. Both of them, they both are. They, I literally felt like I was hanging out with like my cousins. Yeah. It was so much fun. That's but, a, that's like a childhood dream. I wish I was more coherent to, <laughs> you know, really soak it in. You seem like a great time. I am a blast in a glass, as Snooki would call this it. Is Fantastic. <laughs> this is great. We need to get out. Please. Uh, beanie Babies or Tamagotchis? Oh, my God. Beanie Babies. Me, too. I have. To, All right. I, that's so funny because I literally just said this to my, my boyfriend. Um, not that we're talking about engagement or anything. Ooh, okay. But um, I'm dead. We were, like, talking about the difference of, like, you know, a lab-grown versus, like, a... Sorry to go off the rails. No. Here, but the difference between, like, a lab-grown and a real diamond. And he was like, well, you know, if you get a real diamond, you can always trade it in later. And, you know, get something bigger at a better value. And I'm like, bro, I couldn't, I still have my, my Beanie Babies and my Barbie dolls under my childhood bed. I can't, I can't part yeah. from those. What makes you think I'm parting from the ring you proposed to me in? Exactly. So I'm sorry, no. I still have all my Beanie Babies, <laughs> all my Barbie dolls. They're all down my basement. That's got to be worth something. Oh, they have to be. And me and my brother used to play Beanie Baby soccer with it. Whatever that is, don't even ask. Soccer. Yeah, we used to just, in our hallway, it was like a... A bowl that was rolled up with foil, and we would just like toss the legs of your beanie baby. <laughs> that did. That's kind of actually ridiculous when you think about it. No, it's okay. I used to make my Barbies pregnant with the the little soccer balls that they would give you with like, soccer great. Barbie. I just stick it in their shape, like she's pregnant. That's actually like more like of something that a kid would do. Yeah. Not not beanie baby soccer. We had like drafts and everything. I love that. Yeah, that's what we did. I want um, it next time. Yeah, beanie. I still have them all. Um, <laughs> mood rings or choker necklaces. That's so hard. Right. Oh God. I no, that's so hard. You gotta pick one. 
Oh my God, no. Okay, hmm, mood rings were my everything, mm-hmm. but choker necklaces came back. They did. And I still have them. Yes. And I, lo- I mm-hmm. love that. I, th- right. I think I have to go with choker. Choker, choker yeah. necklaces. All right. That's so Raven. This is so fun. Or Lizzie McGuire. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. It's Lizzie McGuire. Yeah. Okay, but, like, I still love Raven. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, she had a great personality, very big, mm-hmm. right? But Lizzie McGuire is, like, really when you think about your childhood, well, right? Well, it's um, when the Lizzie McGuire movie, when she mm-hmm. went to Rome. That's Lives Rent Free in My Brain. Please. We, I performed that song at my talent show in fifth grade. I think that we need to perform that song and, like, <laughs> one of us wears a wig because we were both brown hair. Oh, yeah, what are we going to do? <laughs> I mean, in the summer, I tend to go blonde, so maybe I'll take okay, that. Okay, so then, then we'll do it with that. Got them. it. That would be so much fun. That, that would, would be, be hilarious. Um, but, yeah, she was my first concert, Hillary Duff. Shut up. Yeah, she was my first ever concert that I ever went to. Interesting. Yeah, Mine what was, was yours? Spice Girls. <gasps> the reunion tour. The reunion tour. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Spice Girls. Were my thing. Oh, love um, them. Yeah. Um, my husband came up with this question, which is stupid. I actually don't even want to ask it. No, please do. He said kickball or dodgeball. Was that like a 90s versus 2000s I thing? I guess. I don't know. I think it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hold on. Because here I am. I'm doing this at like 12 o'clock at night while watching This Is Us. And I'm like, I need to pick up one more. Because you're watching This Is Us. Yeah. And he's like, kickball versus dodgeball. You know what? Don't even answer no, that. No, it's, it's stupid. kickball. The answer is kickball. Right? More I can't fun. throw a dodgeball. It's really it's yeah, depressing. Yeah, it's not my favorite. You yeah. Know, I could have came up with a, definitely a better question <laughs> than that, but whatever. Like Full House, right? The fashion oh, back then. Like That's I a good some, one. Yeah. Like I put in my little extras, facts things, like Full House, your 90s crush. That'll be like, my next one. Yeah. Like yeah. I just... I like what was your '90s crush? Lance Bass. <laughs> he was your '90s crush. <laughs> Wait, no, I've got a, my '90s crush. Mm. Yeah, it was Lance Bass. Yeah, but then like you know we evolved. Yeah, we to evolved. Nick Jonas. Yeah, still is. Don't you have to be a Joe girl because then we are really gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> you, please come on i love the jonas brothers okay great yeah love it. like they they are great okay take all yeah. take all but I'll, nick all but nick okay <laughs> how nuts we're crazy we're insane yeah like um the justin bieber thing was not for me oh no i was one of her too but no. like if i if you made me choose it have to, i just have to i'm loyal yeah uh-huh. i'm i was not like the justin bieber girl that was like oh my god justin oh no I, yeah, I, no I very much was it wasn't me i actually to i be had honest, multiple boyfriends at one time if you couldn't tell did you? Well, I mean, oh, celebrity wow. boyfriend. Wait, I'll die. <laughs> I'm like, did you? Well, you go, girl. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Mentally, I Mentally. Had, I had a bunch. Okay, so it was um, Justin Bieber, uh-huh. Nick Jonas, and who else? Oh, oh. Like, Mentally. About me? Yeah. Well, as of like a month ago, two months ago, it was, <laughs> I ranked all of them. Um, it was Travis Kelsey all oh, day yeah. long. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Jonas. And Matt Reif. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he's going to be at the... Um, Ocean. Ocean. Oh, mm-hmm. you already know. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you want to know why? I spent $300 to do a meet and greet with that man. Wait, are you kidding? Just to try and pitch my podcast to tell him to come on it. Really? And I got his manager's number. He was so nice. He's like, yeah, yeah, just text my manager. Like, Wait, well, this is amazing. You have a podcast. I do have a podcast. It's, no called, Ser- it's called Serving Serracha. Um, it was just a place for like all my interviews to go with all the artists that I Wait, like. This talk is to. really cute. Yeah, it was. So, it's really Serving fun. Serving Sriracha. Sriracha, like Sriracha. Yeah, but Rach. Okay, I'm glad you got it. Wait, that is clever. <laughs> it is clever, but I don't. I don't like you are on your ish. Like you're you're doing this. Mine's like a hub. Like I like keeping my artist interviews there. So it's uh-huh. like kind of like just all your stuff is there. Yeah, I love that. Yep. But, that is great. Now, um, would you do that for Q102 or yourself? Like, is both. that both? So it started okay. on Q102, and it was, this makes me feel old talking about it. It's because, like, podcasting, like, I've been with Q102 longer than, like, podcasting was, like, a thing. Yeah. Before influencers were a thing, like, we were the OG influencers. Yeah. So that's why all of these amazing opportunities have fallen into my lap, because I think I've, I'd like to think that I've created this, like, influence. Yeah, definitely. Before all of this kind of popped off. Because social media, that stuff wasn't really right. a huge, huge thing right. then. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, a lot of people, like, kind of hit that brunt in radio of, like, trying to differ between being traditional and stick mm-hmm. with radio or, like, kind of growing and going with the way that the digital age was moving. Mm-hmm. So I chose to, like, you know, kind of mold to, like, where we're at in society and yeah, like, kind which, of integrate the two. Which is what you have to do even you do. when you're on radio. Oh, like, yeah. you have to... Stay relevant. Stay relevant somehow. Mm-hmm. And social media and posting. And isn't it crazy how, like, life is It's right so now? toxic. Yeah, it is so toxic. We're tired. <laughs> right? Check on your millennial friends. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Because even with this and even my personal page, I sometimes am like, oh, wait, I got to post something? Well, you, well that, this is real. I talk my hands too much that I'm knocking cameras Is it down. bad that I didn't even, I didn't even register that because <laughs> the fact that i haven't knocked over this wine bottle everywhere is insane to me i get yelled at all the time my hands are moving whatever yeah yeah but but no it's it's very real it's a real thing yeah. and it's um 
you have to know when to put your phone away. Mm -hmm. And for me, like it became when um, a lot of like opportunities to do like like dining experiences, like when like the whole influencer thing kind of popped off, it was like, let's ask this influencer to come to a restaurant and document their dining experience. Yeah. And I would look at, look at that as like a date night for me and my boyfriend, but we, we couldn't eat and enjoy the dinner until I got a video. Uh, gotcha. And it took yes. away the leisure of going out to dinner with my boyfriend. You know yes. what I mean? And I was like, we got to stop doing this. Because mm -hmm. like then it became work and it wasn't fun to go out to dinner anymore. And it really changes your mindset and kind of you realize what the things you take for granted. Um, something as simple as no phones at the dinner table. I really love that you said that because like you're doing this because someone invited you there. I was just posting because I just was doing it. And I love that you said that. Because it's a fake it till you make it mentality. Oh, yeah. with with me in life. I've been faking this Same. since I was thirteen. Same. And the funny thing is, when someone looks at me, they're like, "You're doing so great." I'm like, "Am I okay? I'm glad you think so. I must be doing something right here." But that's the power of social media, and that's why, like, oh you, can, you can hate on it as much as you want. Yeah. And like, I am one of the biggest haters. I won't mm -hmm. lie. I'll chuck my phone against the wall today if yeah. I could. Yeah. But you can. I could post this microphone and be like, "Cool," and then tag. Sure. sure yeah and be, they'll be like thanks for using our product like it you get in the you, it gives you the accessibility yeah. like we've never had before never had before puts you and your platform in the face of these these brands yep that'll be like oh my god you're using this well why don't you try this microphone next and they'll exactly. send it to you and that's how that fake it till you make it mentality just it's a truth like back then like when i first started doing music it was myspace mm -hmm. so like my, oh, my space. My space. My dad made me like a music account for them, right? Mm -hmm. And my my music was like, because back then people didn't really put their music out there, right? Yeah. So at that point in the city, everyone was like, oh my God, like she has CDs out, like her music's on iTunes, all this stuff, right? Yep. I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't think nothing of it, but I'm like, oh, I have a music account. Mm -hmm. This is fun, right? And then it was just like, when Instagram happened, the whole YouTube thing, mm -hmm. YouTube, I got very confused. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was just like, I don't know what to do here. So then that's when I was just like, all right, well, I got to start posting stuff, right? Yep. So I, I taught myself how to, like, edit videos. Well, that's why I think MySpace was such an underrated platform. We were, we were coding. We were coding. Like, what? Do you know how rich we would be if we stuck with that? We were, <laughs> we were coding. My <laughs> first MySpace song, I'll, I'll always remember, my brother made my account. I was in fifth grade, it was very late, like an early bloomer for MySpace. Yeah. It was Hollaback Girl. Shut up. Ain't no Hollaback Girl. Mine was Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> but why, why Loosen can't I? up my no, no, me and you. No, that's Cassie. Just kidding. God, for, <laughs> God forbid. I was always torn between the two. Uh -huh. But no, I, we were making our own accounts. We would get in the fights with people with our top eights. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, and that, like, no, that's how you would break up with people. Yeah. If you came out of the top eight, it was like... Yeah. Like, we were very obsessed. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I still remember, like, looking at people saying, am I on it? Am I on your top three? Remember when Snapchat <laughs> used to have the top three? Yeah. And, like, would show every it's expose your ass yeah. right away. I kind of miss that era. Let's, yeah. get, like, let's get, like, raunchy with it. Right? Because, you know I mean? like, people right now, like, everything's, like, sneaky, sneaky. sneaky. I don't like that. Privacy. Privacy. I don't no, like. Don't do anything that you wouldn't want anyone to exactly. do. Exactly. Please. I'm an open book. Oh, me too. <laughs> I do, clearly talk too much. I'm an open book. <laughs> I God only knows how long is this happening so far. Yeah. This is, like, my favorite one. No way! What's the longest podcast you've this done? This is it! Oh, shoot. This is it! <laughs> well, I mean, I did one for someone else, and it was an hour and a half, because oh. I can't shut up. Exactly. This so. is, well, this is the first time. I feel like I'm on, like, a radio tour for myself, uh -huh. which, like, artists usually yeah. come to, like, me for. Mm -hmm. And I think you're, like, my third podcast in a week. Wow, this is awesome. This is Well, I feel, I feel like more of a celebrity than oh, I have in my, okay. <laughs> in my whole life. Love it. But, like, I'm learning that I don't shut up. Oh, I so don't. it's probably for the better that I'm on the opposite. So, side. Someone said to me, they're like, "Yeah, you, um, you're made for this because you don't know how to shut up." Oh yeah, and I'm like, "Okay, that's good." Hey, you're telling me the one guy he said um, it was his his podcast and I was on it and I said, oh, "I'm so sorry, I talk too much." He goes, "No, this, this is good that you talk too much because you're doing this right. kind of stuff." I'm like, "Okay, if you as think long as so. you're engaging and relatable, yeah." It'll take you far. I mean, his whole podcast, we talked about my family and how nuts we were, but oh, yeah. I need to do a podcast about them. <laughs> <laughs> Please, we need to get them on the podcast. Yeah, that that's going to be something. That's My, when my I brother would... Philip won't talk. My brother Frankie won't shut up. And my, my parents will just end up cursing at each other. It'll the be dynamic, great. I can't wait. They're very similar It'll to mine. It'll be great. That's oh, so funny. Do you funny. have siblings? I do. I have a younger brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're the older one. I am, but yeah. he actually, I think, is the more mature one. Mm -hmm. Um. Or at least the parents' favorite, so that immediately puts him like on the pedestal higher <laughs> uh -huh. than me. 
Um, but yeah, he's like my he's my person. Yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll do no wrong in my book or my parents. That is me with my brother Philip. Yeah, the yep. one behind the camera. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll kill. Kill oh, for ki- him. Oh yeah, no. Oh uh, yeah, I'm messy when it comes to like taking, yeah. Well, not even taking care. He has to take care of me, but like, um, I'm six years younger. If someone ever even gave an inch to try to make fun of my brother, mm-hmm. I would say, "Don't you mess with my brother." Wait, Little... so you have two older brothers? Yeah. Did you uh, ever feel that growing up? What? Like, because they always say like the younger sister, like you got two uh, two older brothers who like if you brought a boy home, oh, it was like no, game over. they weren't that way. Okay, um, and I wasn't really the girl that would bring anyone home because I was always doing my music, right? So I never really like relationships and stuff weren't like in my focus, right? Isn't that crazy? <sighs> Golden Child. Look yeah, at you. like I just was always like music, <laughs> right, this, right, that. And then I, when I took my little break, that's when I met, met my husband. I love that. Yeah. See, I mean, hey, things fall into your lap when you it least does. expect it. Yeah, yeah. And he has nothing to do with music. Um, wow. Is in the Mummers. Yeah. God, I love him. Yeah, we oh. met from the parade. Wait, that's what I wanted to hit you up about. Next yeah. year, I want in. Okay. I've never been a Mummer, and I need to do it. Do you want to be in my club? I, wait, but d- what's the commitment on it? Because I really want to do this. If they, do you really want to? I, it's twice a week to dance. Uh, for a couple months, you learn to dance. Wait, I would love that. Okay, wait. We will talk, mommers. If you're in my club, this will be so much fun. I don't know. I don't understand. That there's okay. a culture, and I so, obviously know, like, I know the mummers, but mm-hmm. I know there's a culture that goes way deeper than my understanding. Yes. Yeah, so here's the thing. We'll get you to come to some parties. I feel like I have to be, like, initiated. Yeah, you'll, you'll come to some parties, and then we'll get you to dance. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm I hosted, nervous. I hosted the parade last year with Alicia Vitarelli. I love Alicia. Yeah, she's awesome. Wait, we're like you guys are so similar. Yeah, you are. You are quite literally. Uh-huh. Yeah, people wow. say like that. I'm like her sister. You, but we're I was going to say you guys are very well could be related. Yeah, we we hosted the parade together last year. Oh. I danced and then I went and I hosted the parade. Talk was, about a queen. I'm it was my her. oh god. Yeah. She is philly yeah, like she and imba- all parades everything like yeah. she's i think i talk about her on every one of my podcasts <laughs> yeah like she's like <gasps> the inspo she is yeah. like she really got me out of my comfort zone i love that yeah she was really like she was like you are made to do something good in this world like you need to do something and be on tv and shine your light on people and I she I sounds am. like my mama yeah i love that <laughs> yeah she's so inspirational oh, yeah they're cut from the same cloth yeah and then, then. she'll like Text me, how's your son doing? Yeah, so sweet. Okay, love her. Yeah. I, not, I knew that I did, but like mm-hmm. just, I love when people get personal. Yeah, very personal. Like yeah. just, oh, send me a picture that I took of, with, uh, like, took of us, like, or send me like, um, right. Amazon. I was like, yeah, I have a wedding to go to, whatever. She was sending me dresses on Amazon. <laughs> Put it on your storefront. Yeah. I need to do the storefront do, thing. Yep, yep, Amazon yep. storefront. Make sure you check it out. Hey. Right off. <laughs> that? Link in bio. <laughs> Link in bio. I'm crying. But, wow, we've really, this is a great, I don't even did know. Did you ask any of the questions that you had written down? I gotta be honest, I, I think we did. Okay, great. I think we did. Um, Like, I don't even, oh, I. You know, I I don't know. I was like putting on there. What do you do for the summer? Like there's all stupid stuff. You know, forget Same it. We, thing we we're did, doing all day. We we, <laughs> we do a lot of we we had a lot of great I questions. Feel, I we feel just like had a lot of great conversations. We did, and I love you. Did a great job of being a conversationalist and not an interviewer. Thank you. Yes. I literally looked and was like, I don't even know what I do. Usually, I'm like this. I'm like, okay, I think I got yeah, everything. Yeah, but like, we ha- I barely looked at no, this. No, that's why I was thing. like, I don't even think she asked her questions. Yeah. But I guess look at you. You're, yeah, you're asked, done. Did it? I asked all these questions. I'm so this proud. This is great. Thanks. The only thing. I didn't ask was about like the small businesses, but we touched on it already. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Love that. Wait, we did a good job. We did. Okay, Yay. love it. Okay. Um, I need your yes. Wait, the closing I put. Okay, go ahead. Wait, we need. I'm sad we have to end this. We literally could talk for days and days. We did that. I mean, I think unless you want more than an hour and fifteen, <laughs> like that's that. We'll, do, we'll um, just do it again all over. That's fine. Tell us your last final message message for someone who is just trying to follow their dream Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be radio music anything just you know you went to school for this Mm -hmm. um this is something that you always love listening to right you had a a goal in mind for yourself Mm -hmm. tell people how they can follow their dream i think that is such a loaded question um for the for the better it's a good it's a great question but it's, a, it's about how much you want it. And that's where, circling back to what I said before, knowing your worth, because there are going to be so many people that shoot you down in this world and make you feel like, you know, you're there but not quite just yet and kind of give you, like, those little gaslighter moments that'll mm-hmm. make you question whether or not you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and what your purpose is. 
And I think if you have that self-confidence to know what you were put on this earth for, which, you know, sometimes I still question that. But if you just know that, like, you're doing it for something that's not selfish gain, Mm -hmm. then pursue it. Like, don't let anyone tell you no and keep going and growing. I always battle this idea of, like, complacency versus comfort. Um, So if I ever feel like there's an opportunity where my growth gets stumped, then I'm complacent. Mm -hmm. If I feel like I'm comfortable, but I'm still getting opportunity to grow, then I'm in the right place. So keep growing and going. And that's for any era, genre, perspective in life you want to like achieve. Just know who you are in the process and it'll come to you. My thing was uh, be who you want to be and don't ever hide it. So love it. It's yeah. kind of aligned. Yeah. Like your mantra. Um, I had like a song that came out called I'm Just a Kid. I wrote it when I was young. I have to send it to you because a Please? lot that you just said reminded me of my song. And how old were you when you wrote that song? Um, I, 2010. Okay. So I was uh, 16, 17. Look at you. Yeah. And then we always thought we were stupid when we were kids. Right. But you're, you're preaching mantras. Like- <laughs> Love that. That is really crazy. Yeah, Isn't that's it? really cool that you said that. That was inspiring. Thank you. Well, I mean, you wrote the song about it. <laughs> but your nails are beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. We'll talk for hours. Okay. Hours. Okay. <laughs> Let's end this, sadly. I know. Um, you can uh, check Rach out on all social media. We will have links below. Um, listen to her on Q102. She is like my soul sister. Truly. <laughs> we literally just met, and this has been the longest podcast that I've ever done. Uh, and I loved every minute of it. Me too. Thank I you did. so much for giving me the time of day. Oh. Are you kidding? <laughs> like, stop right now. Uh, but um, thank you for watching, listening, subscribing. I hope that you had just as much fun as we had today. And don't forget, keep your eyes on the city. And your ears on the buzz. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>